We have our very first look today at our smallest, lightest, and least expensive of our totally exclusive Go Play series of trailers here. If you're getting started or upgrading from something like a pop-up, stay tuned. I think you're going to like what you see. Hello and welcome back once again everybody, Josh the RV Nerd, and I'll be your guide once again today as we go through our GoPlay 19BH from Wayfinder RV. Basically, in a sense, our own exclusive company uh, where we are kind of revamping the way that RVs can be manufactured and represented and sold to customers. What we've done here is we've cut out a ton of manufacturer middleman money and brought you all thriller, no filler on something that is really feature packed and uh, we feel very priced aggressively. And actually, if you want to check out any of our pricing on these, we uh, were able to pretty much standardize them across the nation. Uh, and you can check all that out at our Wayfinder RV website. But what are we looking at on this floor plan? Um, at a glance, it's a very straightforward floor plan. There's nothing new in the way of the layout of this one. It's the way that we've cut out a bunch of extra money to give you a fully featured RV for a couple grand less that makes it pretty attractive. This has a one plus three year warranty. Um, it's a full eight foot wide, which is a little less common on single axles, but that adds some extra living space uh, and, and some storage that a, a more conventional seven foot wide single axle just simply would lack. The uh, underbelly of this is enclosed also, which is a nice find, but it's carpetless, it's pet friendly, it's easy cleaning. I call it easy breezy, beautiful cover girl kind of camping right here um, with, with some really smart content details like if you've never owned an rv there's things here that are absolutely fantastic that you wouldn't even think about like drawers in the kitchen so many single axle little bunk houses have absolutely no drawers in the kitchen whatsoever but as a first time rv or that's just something that you almost take for granted would be located in a kitchen we made sure that we had those kind of things in this rv we've got a 12 volt compressor fridge which is travel friendly fast cooling we're solar prepped if you want to uh, you know kind of wire it up and spend some extra time off grid and there's a bunch of other really cool awesome features i'm really excited to show you on this one now it's not necessarily what everyone's going to call perfect like i'll volunteer the fact that it has a camp queen that i'm not personally really a big fan of but there's a reason that we kind of have it in this floor plan and telling you the good with the bad even though it's our series of trailers still what we're committed to doing here in our relentless pursuit of transparency and if you appreciate that hit that subscribe button if you're new with us but i will tell you there is one thing that's really weird in the bathroom of this rv and it's me now like i kind of said the the floor plan of this is not original that's not our goal here our goal is to get straightforward, very functional, and to basically streamline the cost of a lot of the uh, RV production process so that we can try to get you something that's fully equipped and fully featured without the, the full price tag. And so far, it seems to be working pretty well. But there are a couple things that I sort of feel like, I don't know, maybe spending a few extra dollars might be worth it. Now, volunteer one of those right here. Uh, and really looking for a lot of your feedback. Like, the you know, the bunk space is pretty straightforward. By the way, do you prefer this open bunk design or would you rather have it more closed off? I kind of like the way the RV looks bigger. And I feel like with the bunk still mostly enclosed up by the head and chest area, it's not, I don't think my kid's going to fall out of it you know um and my kid tends to be a thrasher man she 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 just bounces around at night but i like the phone pockets like that's cool but no power outlets actually in these bunks i think like even just a simple set of usb plugs would be great i do like by the way each bunk has its own little you know outside curtain and uh they uh they do open for airflow the windows now the lights in the main cabin are on one switch which is again something not a lot of single axle campers always do and one of the reasons that really excites me is something i haven't mentioned yet this rv's taller um a lot of manufacturers when they have a tandem axle eight foot wide series of travel trailers and then they also start building a uh a, a single axle camper usually your single axles are are not as wide and often not as tall that's not the case here this is a, a the normal standard body size eight foot wide six foot nine tall inside it's just shorter you know, that's the thing. It's the same go play. It's just shorter. Now, this is, I don't really think, a good camper for sitting inside watching TV all day. You can see how the TV bracket's basically covered by the curtain. I don't know that that really offends me that awful much because I'm certainly not buying this camper to sit inside and watch TV. And and frankly, um, you know, if, if we are going to be stuck inside for a while, 
Uh, most of us have these little devices, you know, eh, we could all kind of entertain ourselves for a little bit. Generally speaking, you know, when, when I go family camping, we very much just disconnect from all the electronics, but we do take about an hour a day in the hottest part of the day to hop inside in the air conditioning, do a little, you know, lay on the bed kind of siesta and just have a little bit of me time that, you know, sometimes self-care just involves, you know, watching whatever you, your favorite YouTube is. Now, the funny part is my daughter's favorite YouTuber. Um, well, I'm not even in her top 10. <laughs> not only am I not her favorite, I'm not even close. <laughs> Um, the RV is a little bit lacking in campsite window coverage, but this is a small RV with the full viewing window in the kitchen and the entry door. I don't think it's terrible. And there's no heat vents in the floor. Um, no carpet other than the carpet square where I wipe my feet, which naturally you're looking at right now because my timing is impeccable. Um, it's kind of like a, a duck with no bill. It's impeccable. <laughs> This is another thing I'd really personally like to see changed on these. Instead of the knee knocker posts, I would prefer myself a set of those free uh, floating folding legs. And maybe the, the, the table brackets against the wall for stability. Maybe it doesn't, but having that table be able to get out of the way, it actually, it's, it's crazy how big it makes the RV feel. And you can take it outside for picnic o'clock, as it were. This is also something I don't love, but on this floor plan, the way, you know, without extending the length and the weight and the cost, I don't know how you really get around it without losing a bunch of storage. And that's the, this is a 60 by 74 Camp Queen. It just, it just is. Like a taller person like me, I'm a little over six foot. My, I'd, I'd probably have to sleep on the side nearest the dinette. And, you know, it is a, I'm going to have to crawl over you kind of bed situation. And that doesn't necessarily work for everybody. Um, Again, we do have a full window in the door. It doesn't come with a privacy shade, but it is prepped for one. And that's a, a that's a low dollar thing. And that's kind of some of the logic that we applied to these RVs. Um, we, we weren't trying to necessarily make them the be all end all for everybody. But there are certain things that some people have certain preferences for. And we wanted to make an RV that could kind of easily accomplish those things with little to no cost. And, and like the, the, the shade in the entry door, you don't, you don't need a tech degree from RV school to, to install one of those. If I can do it with my, uh, you know, three stooges uh, level of tool proficiency, I'm pretty confident you can too. Another thing here. These are not stapled cabinets. This is all pocket screwed lumber core cabinetry with all wood doors, which is a, another nice little touch. Um, the uh, 12 volt DC compressor fridge is currently the standard and only fridge option are available on these. Like we really actually have no options on these whatsoever uh, because as strange as it sounds, even if an option is not applied to an RV, simply having a variety of options available will actually increase the base cost of an RV because of the extra manufacturing management level and oversight. So we wanted to start with these meat and clean, down and dirty, and then let you kind of help guide us from there. Um, personally, I really like the big farm sink in here because it is coupled up with the vertical two burner stovetop that has countertop space on both sides. So I don't care if you're lefty or righty, that makes sense to me. And we're gonna get all that storage open uh, in just a few minutes here. I kind of realize that we've done the Sound of Music Maria and we've wrapped our way back around to go. So let's start crack a lack and open all the storage here, which is a bit of a technical term. Uh, again, all pocket screwed lumber core. The dinette doesn't have doors, simple basic camper. There is a set of power outlets under that din dinette and on the wall, kind of wedged between the bed and the dinette. So there are some power outlets nearby there. Storage uh, below the dinette, that's a sleeper. Storage around the bed situation, which is nice, including an actual hanging closet and a dresser drawer. So there's just, there. I, I feel like this has got some better accomplished storage than most things, but you might notice the bed does not easy lift or anything like that whatsoever. Um, I, I kind of had to take the uh, the jack crank and wedge it in there. That is something I'd like to see. Even one of those, um, I call them like uh, piano rods where... Uh, like if you've got an older car like mine that doesn't have gas struts to hold the hood open, you have the rod that you stick up to hold the hood open. I'd love to see at least something like that under the bed, um, you know, if if there's not going to be gas struts there. But this is all stuff we're looking for feedback on. Look at all the storage in the kitchen. For a little camper, this has got absolutely awesome dry storage space. 
um, including an actual pair of drawers and a space for a wastebasket. Again, this is stuff that if you've never owned an RV, you don't realize how useful it is. And getting rid of drawers, getting rid of doors, combining things and just losing storage saves tons of money in RV production and can make the RV far less expensive. But you notice that was not our goal here. We wanted it to be fully featured. We wanted to find a way to reduce costs without reducing features. Now, I will volunteer something, and I'll probably touch on it again when we step outside. This RV does have, I think, a very limiting cargo carrying capacity. I would actually personally like this RV to receive an axle upgrade, which, yes, it might cost some weight and some money, but it would great, uh, like, uh, imagine if you had, I don't know, 8,000, or not 8,000, <laughs> 800 to 1,000 pounds of additional cargo carrying capacity. Yeah, imagine 8,000 pounds of additional cargo. My point is, with all the dry storage, especially people who boondock and, and like to put some water in the tanks, this, this is a little bit limiting in that regard. Now, the, uh, door over here i do like that it does have a lock it's just those little details remember when we were talking about that me time i know some people that occasionally just hide in the bathroom and take toilet selfies what a bunch of nerds right but the fact is um you know having a, a door to lock for privacy there is awful nice now the mirror mirror on the wall is nice it's not a full medicine cabinet I, I think that if I was going to purchase this, I would add like some towel bars and or a medicine cabinet over there on the right hand wall. Maybe one right behind the toilet, something like that, I think would be awful handy. And the power outlet back here, I suppose, is really handy for keeping your phone charged on those <coughs> longer um, excursions in the bathroom. <laughs> Uh, this is a step-in tub. Part of the reason uh, that's there is to give you more elbow room so that, you know, a hard shower wall can be a bit of a problem. But considering this is a full eight foot wide, I thought the space around the toilet was great. It does not have shower surround paneling. Need your input on that. Um, to give you uh, the point counterpoint shower surround paneling, uh, it, it'll cost a few bucks. What it'll save you from needing to do with, with a conventional wall shower like this, every time you're done showering, you need to take your towel and you need to just wipe down the walls and then turn on your vent fan up here. By the way, not all single axle campers have vent fans in the bathroom that can do that. At least this one does. Would you like to see, see a shower surround, uh, on this though? Understanding it'd be a couple extra dollars. And this right here, the uh, the skylight and the power vent are one thing. And again, with this being six foot nine tall, I was able to stand in the shower, no problem, with shoes and nerdy little hat right here, covering up my male pattern baldness, friar tuck, bad hair day situation. I wish I understood how, uh, it's just, I, I did not win the hair lottery, uh, obviously, when I was born. Now, towing and hauling one of these little things is uh, not too tall of an order. If you notice here, the total GVW of this, the gross vehicle maximum weight, is, uh, well, it's less than 4,500 pounds. That means that you don't necessarily need a big three-quarter ton diesel to be able to carry one of these around with you. Um, now, it's also not extremely long, but it does have one potential Achilles heel for some folks, and that is a little bit of a low cargo carrying capacity. And once again, I hope you appreciate how, even though this is our series of trailer, I'm still, uh, we still want to point out those potential areas of concern where this might not be the right RV for you. Our goal is not just to sell you a camper. We want to sell you the, the, the right one, the one that you want to own and, and use and enjoy. I call it getting your second camper the first time, and that always remains our commitment here. Uh, again, one of the more interesting qualities uh, is the full eight foot wide body that you don't often find on a single axle uh, little camper. You may notice that this one is a single propane tank as compared to the, the, the dual tanks. Basically, uh, you have as many propane tanks on these as you have axles, if you kind of think of it that way. Now, uh, in case you're kind of curious, like, what are these symbols and everything? That's our Bish's RV, uh, our RV, hmm, RV <laughs> Wayfinder symbol, and uh, our company font, basically, in the uh, the Go Play series. Now, this is the first of our exclusive series of trailers. We'll actually have uh, different things over time that are coming out, but this is where we're starting, and uh, we're we're eager to see it evolve over time. Now, taking a look down here in that baggage door, one thing I, I kind of do wish that that did penetrate through into the under bed storage area there. Now, they, they don't have the ability to do a full pass-through compartment on, on one of these because of where some things are located uh, under the bed. But 
it does feel like having a longer, deeper pocket right there would be useful. Like when you get unhitched, having a place to put like your, your anti sway bars and all that is really, really handy. And on this one, you really don't have an outside storage ability to do that. But that's my two cents. Do you think that baggage door should actually penetrate through under the bed or keep them separated? Like, uh, like the offspring, if you pick up what I'm putting down on the musical references, <laughs> let me know there. Um, the uh, awning is not massive, but I think it's about as good as they were going to do on a little camper like this. And I'm borderline on a campaign waging war against outside speakers and RVs. It is my personal two cents. I don't know that RVs really need them anymore. I think that uh, with the, the, the commonplace nature of things like portable Bluetooth speakers and the fact that they typically sound better, and you can keep them at lower volumes down at your picnic table instead of blowing away the neighbors, well... You know, I, I, they just, they make a little bit more sense to me. Now, uh, if I seem a little distracted, it's because as I was walking around, I caught a spider web to the back of the legs and it's just like, it's stuck to me like glue right now. And that is just a weird, creepy feeling. I am, uh, it, you know, it feels like you got cotton, the fabric of your life wrapped around your legs at uh, Halloween time, like some dicker. I, I don't know. I just know that I don't really like it. Um, anyway, moving on back to the RV. You see the bracket in the upper right corner? She is prepped and ready for one of those uh, little portable telescopic uh, ladders. Once again, though, with no big outside storage compartment, if you want to bring one of those with you, you kind of have to stuff it under the bed and haul it in and out of the camper. Maybe it's not the worst thing in the world, but it, it just, again, feels like maybe there'd be a simpler way to go about it. Um, the roof is fully walkable, and you may have noticed from our early flyby floor plan and a flash footage that uh, there is solar prep uh, up on the roof. So it's a, uh, a plug up on the roof, or if you want to add a solar panel, you can. There's the sticker inside the RV that tells you, uh, you know, where the solar charge controller could be mounted, and then you just finish running the wiring down to the battery. Now, if you can DIY all that, that's cool. That's going to work great for you. If you cannot, call us. We can install solar on stuff. That's stuff that we've been doing for years. One other thing I want to point out, because it's easy to overlook, especially if you've never shopped for an RV, and a lot of these Go Plays are really well suited for first time RVers, and that's the tint on the windows and the fact that every window that can opens for airflow. Those are some really excellent qualities that will improve your general experience and quality of life while you're camping. But if you've never camped before, those are those extra details that you don't think about and you wonder, huh, why is that other camper, uh, uh, you know, a dollar cheaper or whatever? Well, it's probably because it's got to be missing something because we did a lot of work to cut out a lot of the middleman advertising money for the manufacturers to the dealerships. And basically what I'm doing here is like footing the advertising bill so that you're getting a full featured camper without all the extra clerical price smoked into it. Now, one other thing here, I've asked you a lot of questions along the way. We are very interested in getting your feedback on these because we are really trying to make this one of the most consumer directly influenced series of campers that's ever existed out there. We are going to host, uh, not, not only are we combing through constantly all the comments uh, on these, uh, but we are also going to host some regular online, like do you want this or that kind of uh, events where you will literally get to vote on what changes on this RV the next year. So please stay tuned, even if this isn't the right floor plan for you. Throw your feedback in there. Just because you're not looking for a little bunkhouse doesn't mean your feedback isn't valuable. We want to get all the information we can because maybe it's something we can also apply to some other member of our Go Play series. Now, naturally, the big question, what does one of these things run? Uh, check the links in the video description. Uh, you can go to our Wayfinder RV website where we have all that clearly listed for you. And you can get these ordered and sent to literally any Bish's RV location. Because some of our locations carry brand X, Y, or Z, but not every location carries everything every brand, but every Bish's RV location can get one of these for you. And we have multiple basically distribution hubs like the Ludington, Michigan RV store that I'm at right now that always has a big supply of these in stock whenever we can. But that's the thing. We do bulk batch build these and there will be periods of when they're gone, they're gone until we can get around to building some more again the next time. So leave us that feedback. Let us know what you think and hey, you know, they are available. You can go camping in them right now. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.